Hey everyone, let's wrap up May. This might take a little bit longer than usual because I had a good reading month. I read a ton of books, I uploaded quite a few videos, so we have a lot of things to talk about. I'll leave timestamps in the description if you don't want to watch all of it however long it'll take. Let's start with the videos. I uploaded my first goals check-in for the year and while I was doing very well on my reading goals, I'm not doing so well on all the other goals. Which is okay. Happens. And I hope you're doing okay with your goals still and are happy with what you're achieving right now. After that, I uploaded the BookTube oldie hack. And I really enjoyed doing that, looking back at all the nine years I've been doing this so far. But I also enjoyed reading your comments of the people especially who only watch and don't make videos so you don't get to answer those tags. And I loved reading your responses there. Thank you very much for sharing and sticking with me for so many years. Then we also had two discussions this month. We had talked about the advantages or the benefits of going into books blind. And I really enjoyed your comments there, especially how many of you said that you used to do that as a child a lot more often than today. And also how you do that more for favorite authors. And that is so true that if I really Really like an author, I don't check what the story is about. If there's a new book or I see a book by that author, I'll just pick it up. And the benefit of that is if the book isn't as great as the rest of the books I read by them, it doesn't really matter because I'll still continue reading the author. So that was a fun discussion. Then we also talked about reading short books under 200 pages because the reason I read so much this month is because I binged a lot of short books and I have some thoughts about that and I really enjoyed your comments especially pointing out that short books sometimes can help you get out of a reading slump. I hadn't really thought about that but that's so true. A short book can be less daunting to start when you're in a slump and even if you don't like it or you feel like it takes forever, it's still a short book that is not the same forever as a 400, 600 thousand page book. Loved the discussions and comments there. Thank you all so much. Also, thank you as usual for enjoying my letter to May. It was a bike ride. I hope you didn't feel attacked by all the trees rushing at you. Thank you so much for enjoying that series. And that already leads us to all the books I read. Let's start with the order I read them this month for a change because the only physical book I read was a reread, and it's the second book in the Bartimaeus trilogy. It's a rather bigger book. I really enjoy this series. I enjoy the writing style. I thought a little bit that I had remembered Nathaniel more likable. In this part, the second book, I really thought he was an annoying teenager. But he is a teenager at that time, and he's trying to gain more power and influence. So. I don't know, probably fitting. I still enjoy Bartimaeus best in the series. His commentary, his wittiness, his cheekiness. I enjoy that so much. The series is basically a fantasy series set in London where magicians rule and they summon demons to do their bidding and basically the magic. I listened to Donut Economics on audio because Mel kept recommending it as a way of understanding the economics and also why we need UBI and that's the universal basic income. And while I did enjoy the book, I don't know how to talk about this. It's a nonfiction book about economics and a lot about the history of economics that shows how we got to where we are now and it makes suggestions for how to get out of this situation. And while I thought it was very informative, sometimes it went a little bit over my head and lost me, but most of the time I could follow it. I'm not an economist and I have trouble understanding economy and economics as something that is real. For me, it's all made up arbitrary and really problematic. But that's because probably I don't understand some parts of it and others I don't like. I did enjoy reading the book because it gave me some historical understanding of what happened, why we do have economics. And so for that, I think it's a good book. But I don't think it will help in that things change. I'm very pessimistic in that part. For the next book, I actually put up a video review. That's the only video review I put up this month. And that's Defy or Defend by Gail Carriger. It's one of their short novellas that's a companion novel to the Finishing School series where she writes 
about the characters years after they finished the school. And this is a special book because you can read it as a standalone without spoiling any of the other books, any of the series. You don't need to have read the finishing school to even understand what is going on. Defy or Defend follows Dimity, who's a spy, and she is sent into a vampire hive to fix them because the queen has locked herself into the basement and is rather depressed and everyone is depressed now and it's very dangerous if vampire hives get depressed so Dimity has to go in and fix them and make them happy again. That's a bad summary but sort of like that. Dimity doesn't go alone, she always has someone there to be her safety to watch out for her and that's Sir Crispin and Sir Crispin and Dimity have worked together in the past. They always pretend that, that there is nothing between them but they like each other and I really enjoyed how this worked out in this book. To go into the vampire hive they have to pretend to be married and share a room and this leads them to have discussions about why they never actually got together in the past, how they behaved in the past, there are power struggles or not really struggles but the power dynamics are mentioned and the problems that occur from that and also what they want for the future, how they can get along together and how they deal with that and I loved that. The Vampire Hive is new characters we haven't met before and they're so endearing. There's also a trans vampire character and I loved him. It was so well done how he gets to explore himself and be herself and I loved that. I can only recommend this if you ever wanted to try Gail Carriger but you didn't want to get stuck in five books, six book or whatever 20 something books of her parasol protectorate universe but this is a good thing to start. Then I picked up the Dark Days Pact which is the second in the Lady Helen series. I read the first ages ago and I had the second book on my Kindle for some reason. I think it was on a sale and I was motivated to read the second and so I thought why not read it now to reduce your TBR, finish all those books. It wasn't a good decision. This book continues where the first left off and I had forgotten about the dragging parts which I didn't mind as much but I also had forgotten about the emotional manipulation by the author. There's a lot where you feel your heartstrings being torn together and expanded and it's just painful to see what happens and I currently couldn't handle that. I looked up spoiler review and a lot of people said that it made their hearts ache to read the book. So it's not the book's fault if you enjoy this kind of emotional turmoil and stress. It's a great book. I know a lot of people who really like it but for me in this situation I couldn't handle it so I DNF'd it. Finner is a weird little story. It's set in an Ikea-like store and we have two people who work there and who had a relationship but broke up recently so they're trying to get out of their ways and not see each other but things happen. Of course they have to work together and unfortunately on that day someone gets lost in one of the wormholes that apparently pop up in that store. Yes that's the thing that happens in the furniture store. So of course you put those two people who just broke up to go into the wormhole to find the customer and get them back and it is a fun idea. I really enjoyed that. I also enjoyed how they went through different worlds trying to get the character back and what they had to do after they found her and that was a very very clever and cool idea. I struggled a little bit with the characters. It was all told first person so we have the narrator who suffered from anxiety and depression and was really struggling dealing with the breakup even though I think she was the main instigator in the breakup but we learn a lot about how she felt in the relationship and the way she looked at the other person and it was sometimes exhausting and sometimes very self-centered but that can be normal so but the partner in that was a chaotic trans person who had a lot of issues themselves and we didn't really get to hear their side we only heard the interpretation and that was 
a little bit off at points where I thought I want to hear what the other person thinks, how the other person saw the relationship. But I really liked how they dealt with the situation and also with their breakup in those different worlds chasing that customer. So overall, I think it's a good story, a little bit exhausting. I think this was the debut novella of the author. So there is definitely potential there for interesting characters and stories. So might look out for that. Then I listened to the last book in the Interdependency series, The Last Emperor, and I liked it for how it ended. I liked how the story was wrapped up and how the audiobook was done and all of that. But I didn't like it as much as the second book. So basically the second book in the series is my favorite and I figured out why. The third book is all over the place again due to the story being all over the interdependency. And we have a lot of chunks of narration where it's summarized what happens to move forward and we are less with the characters. There are stretches where we are with the characters in the now and moving forward, but then we also have a lot of, this is what's happening right now. This is what happened there, which is well done and all valid, but I didn't enjoy that as much. So overall, I really like the idea of the interdependency series with the world that is created and the characters. But when it comes to the enjoyment, I think it was a little bit too much over the place, too much summary, too much to be packed into three books. But I don't think I would have been attracted to it if it had been any longer. So it's a 10 book series and you can really dive into all the things that happen. I'm not sure if the attention would have been there then. Kitchen was a surprise for me. I've always wanted to read Banana Yoshimoto but never really picked up anything by her and went into this book blind. And I'm glad I did because it was a lot about grief and about dealing with loss and I wouldn't have picked it up otherwise. But I really enjoyed how the stories were put together, how the writing was done, the ideas and the characters. I really, really enjoyed reading it. So I'm definitely going to read more by Banana Yoshimoto. Then I picked up The Vegetarian. I was lucky to get it for a 50 cent sale and I thought, why not get to it now? It's been on my one day reading list for a while and I was surprised. I always heard people talk about how this is about a woman going vegetarian and how it's really complicated in Korea and how her friends and family dealt with that. While it is about that, I always thought it was more from the vegetarian's perspective and what I lacked was the story from her point of view. So in the first part we find out and meet this character who goes vegetarian but we see it from her husband's point of view and how he deals with that and how the family deals with that. The second chapter is from the brother-in-law, is that the brother-in-law? I think it's a brother-in-law's perspective and how he sees her and what it does to him that she is a vegetarian now. And the third chapter is about the sister and how she deals with that and how she views that. So instead of the book being about the vegetarian, it's more about the surroundings, reacting to it, dealing with it and trying to come to terms with that and how it affected all the family. And it is interesting, it's super well written, but I was lacking the perspective of the vegetarian and Totally my fault, I had the wrong expectations, but sometimes it's hard for the book to live up to the wrong expectations. So still enjoyable, still would recommend it. It's very well done. Then I read The Beautiful Bureaucrat and I must admit, I have no idea what I read there. It's interestingly written. It starts off with this young woman starting a job at this company and she talks about her husband and how they moved there and how they wanted to end this endless circle of being unemployed and just wanting to have money. And you see them struggling with really having no money, moving from one place to the other and subletting and really dealing with it. You see their relationship, you see them doing the mindless boring work. Well, you see her doing it. It's all from her perspective. And while it's mostly interesting, sometimes there are chapters where I didn't really get what was going on. 
I wasn't sure if the character was losing their mind and was going bonkers doing the job they were doing and imagining things, or if I was going insane. I really can't tell. And the end of the book, I didn't understand at all. I don't know what happened in between, how we got to some places and how that happened. I really don't get it. If you have read the book, liked the book, understood the weird writing in between, tell me in comments. I'm usually a fan of weird writing, but I didn't get it. Might have been my state of mind this month, but I didn't get it. Then I listened to Treasure Island as a full cast audiobook from the Audible Originals, and I knew the story beforehand. Does anyone not know the story of Treasure Island in one form or the other? Anyways, so I had read Treasure Island years ago and I thought this would be a nice thing and full cast audiobook. And it was in the beginning, but as soon as we got to the island, things got confusing because there were too many voices that sounded similar and alike and I couldn't keep them apart. That was kind of weird. So Treasure Island, definitely read it if you haven't read it. Maybe not choose this audiobook production. Okay, three more to go. I read The Perilous Life by J. Joe, and this was a fun read. It was in diary style, so we got everything from Jade's perspective, how she's in the 1920s in London and trying to improve her writing. That's why she starts the diary. And she also reads and critiques, and she wrote this, well, really tearing down criticism of a very successful author and his latest book. And so that's how she met the author and got connected to the scene of the writer and involved with the writer and everything there. And I really enjoyed the seeing her history and her playing a part in that and how her finding herself a little bit and knowing and learning more about herself. It was fun to read. It was also, I, I liked her tone, her for the 1920s and a young Asian girl in London, it was a very witty tone to the novel or to the diary entries and how she dealt with everything that came her way. Love that. I can highly recommend it. Then I read Gacha Gacha. Gacha Gacha? I don't really know how to pronounce that and apparently no one knows because it's a made up word. And this was an interesting, weird kind of short novella because it was from the perspective of a young man who talked about his family and how they came from rags to riches, how they grew up in, oh, I forgot where it was, somewhere in India, and how they lived in the poor parts and then things changed and how they came into money and how the roles in the family were set, how the making money affected their family and also their lives. And I really enjoyed the look at that and also his thoughts, but you can always tell that it's his interpretation. His point of view is not precise, concise, and definitely not objective. And the more you read about him and his life and his character, you know how to interpret the other characters. And I kind of wish there was a different ending because it's very abrupt. It's more short story style the ending ends and you don't know what's going to happen and how the ending really is. And I wanted to know more, which is a good thing, I guess. The last of the books I read this month were on audio and they were a series. If you follow me on Twitter, you probably have an idea what I'm talking about. It's The Murderbot Diaries. In May, the fifth book in the series, the first full-length novel, Network Effect, came out. And I listened to it. I loved it. It was a 12 hour audiobook. I listened to it twice in four days because I really, really enjoyed it so much. I didn't expect the author to be able to pull it off that it's as addictive, captivating and gripping as a short novellas, but she definitely did. So if you don't know what the Murderbot Diaries are, it's a book series that follows a security unit who is a human bot construct who's assigned or rented out to people to protect them by his company. This specific security unit has their governor module. That means the thing that controls them and punishes them if they don't follow orders. So it's sort of a free agent, but with the first book, All Systems Red, you find out that 
he's still doing his job. He still gets rented out by the company, fulfills his normal assignments, and really does what it's told with a little bit more freedom and knowledge about what it does. In the first book, definitely you find out that the character calls himself Murderbot and that there was a mass murder in his past, which was its motivation to hack its spell on your module and that they love entertainment. They love shows, they love watching in media and it calms them down because they're also socially awkward and it helps them deal with the side effect of being a human construct that is anxiety and depression. So in the first book we get to know a set of characters and also Murderbot but we also find out that the character doesn't really know what it wants. Throughout the books we get to know the character more. We get to know the friends, its interactions with humans and also how it finds out more and more what it wants. And in Network Effect we see that happening and interacting more and more again. We meet a character from the second novel, Artificial Condition, again and how it affects Murderbot and how it affects its future and I loved reading about this and my battery is flashing so let's wrap this up. If you haven't started the Murderbot Diaries yet you should definitely do that. I highly recommend the audiobooks because I can't read as fast as I want to and with the audiobooks I can listen to one book in one session which is basically what I did. I listened to Network Effect twice when it came out and then I ended the months with All Systems Web, Artificial Condition, Rogue Protocol, Exit Strategy and Network Effect again. So a lot of rereading, a lot of spending time with Murderbot and the characters and I loved it. Tell me in comments what you have read in May. How was your May? How are you doing? Are you safe? Are you still reading? Can you read? What are you reading? Tell me, how are you doing? Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye. <sighs> Before the battery ended. <laughs>